Hey guys, this is Mrs. Kirk. So you are finished with your Alex initial knowledge check and you are working on part two of 1.2 data displays. So I am going to go ahead and scratch off this box plot as far as these notes go, but you can do it if you want extra practice because you're probably going to have um, another problem like this on your regular quiz of course, it'll be on your unit assessment. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to practice, but I am not going to go over it in this video. So, we didn't have a chance to compare box plots. So, I want to just take a second to kind of go over what, what happens here when you're looking at two of them. So, this is noon temperatures in Fahrenheit for two cities that were recorded over a given month. The box and whisker summarize the noon temperatures for each day. So here's city A, here's city B. So noon temperatures, it looks like a minimum of about 58-ish and a maximum of about 80, we can say 82 or 83 for city A and then 63 to 76 or so in city B. So it says which city had a smaller range of noon temperatures. So you can visually tell that if I subtract the biggest from the smallest, this is the shorter amount of distance of noon temperatures. So this is going to be city B. And if you were going to explain your response, you can do the math, or you can say, um, you know, that the minimum and the maximums are in a smaller range. I mean. I don't know how else to do it without showing numbers to explain, but it doesn't ask us to explain. I'm just letting you guys know that it could. It could ask you to explain. Which city had noon temperatures with the larger interquartile range? So if you remember, that is the actual box, and the bigger box is city A. I'm going to say that the bigger box in the box plot, right? Which city had the highest noon temperature? So that's going to be a maximum temperature. Sorry, guys, I got stuff in the way. I just can't push this up. There we go. Highest maximum is in city A, and it looks like about 82. So city A at a maximum of, what I say, 82? Yeah, we'll go with that. Which city had the smallest median? So just a reminder, median is the middle slash here inside the box. The smallest median is this one at 72. So city B at 72 degrees. So this histogram is the bulk of our lesson today. So we're talking about um, collecting this data, which are 16 cyclists, and this is their time that they biked last week. And when we are putting our data into what we call bins, so you can actually literally like think of them as sorting out your data into the right location. And so for this class, we're going to include the left endpoint in our bin. So when we have um, well, hopefully once we sort this all out, I'll ta I'll, we'll talk about what the bin is going to look like and how we know to include this. So this first bin, we have 0 to 4, but 4 is going to be on this bin. And we have 4 to 8, and 8 is going to be in this bin and not this bin. Okay, because you can't have, you're not going to count data twice. So if we have a 4, we can't put it in both bins. We have to pick which bin do 4s go in. So hopefully that helped here. I'm just going to go ahead and, and scratch this all the way down so we know which bin goes where. I just think this kind of helps too. So what numbers are we actually including? So it looks like we're putting a 2 here. Actually, let me just go ahead and put a 5. 5 is going to go here. 7 is going to go here. 13 is going to go here. 6, 5, 12. This is where it got tricky, right? Which one does it go in? 9, 12, 7, 2, 10, 8, 
H is going to go in this bin. 13. 8 goes in this bin. And 18. Okay, so now we're going to tally them up. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1. And then we'll just write the number. So, seems a little redundant to tally them. I do understand, but that's okay. All right, so we have to have kind of a x-axis, for lack of a better word here, and we're going to put our bins. So we'll have 0 to 4 to 8 to 12 to 16 and to 20. And then going up this way is going to be our frequencies. And it looks like our highest frequency is 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we're just now kind of creating this almost, it almost looks like a bar graph. So from this first bin, we said we only have two. So we'll draw a line here. There's our first one. Five is up here. In this first, their second bin, sorry. And then we have four. And we have another four. And we have a one. So, you know, about like this. <clears throat> so, it's very similar visually as a bar graph, but it reads completely different. So, we have to remember that if we have a four, it's in this bin. That's the left endpoint is four. It's going to be in the bin next to it. If we have eights, it's going to go here. And if we have zeros, of course, it's going to go here. So, Hopefully, that helps you to read your histogram. And then the last problem on our page is a dot plot where we just have a series of data that literally has no description. We have no idea what this data is, but we're going to create, and it's very much, this is very much like a bar graph, okay, in it, but it's a frequency table. So we have fours. I think that looks like our smallest number. Yeah, one two, three, four. So we're going to have ones, twos, threes, fours, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we have one, two, three, four, fours. So we're going to make little dots. So one, two, three, four. And then how many fives? One, two, and sevens. One, two, three. No eights, two nines. So something like that. And this will give us a shape of distribution. Later on, we can read these two things similarly. Um, this has more information because you can actually count a frequency in a very specific value, where here we can just have a frequency of a bin of values. So that's the main difference between those two displays. Okay, so your homework, so to speak, is going to be to go back to part one's notes, and I want you to go ahead and make the histogram now for the size of foot and centimeters information. Okay, so you're going to create a histogram on this paper, and that's it. Okay, that's just something we're going to go over tomorrow. So you're going to complete the Z puzzle, make a histogram, and you're done. All right, see you tomorrow.